and I think we are in business. Hey, 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 everyone. Nobody's going to talk back to me. That's fine. <laughs> hey. Hello, hello. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Magalie. <laughs> Thank hey. you. Thank hey, you. you. It's like, am I just being ignored? Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, well, welcome, everyone. Let me um, go ahead and share my screen and then I'll get started with today. I always skip this part. Let me do introductions first. Let me just tell you a little bit and then I will share my screen. Um, so for those of you that are new, which I don't think I see any new faces today, maybe Joyce, but I think everyone else I'm accustomed Look, to seeing. I've been here. You've been here, Joyce? Okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. I know we're waiting on a few people, but I think I have an hour worth of content that I wanna get through. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start. But um, so I'm Magalia Synth, I'm the Interim Executive Director for Hustle Winston-Salem, a nonprofit dedicated to inclusive entrepreneurship. And um, I think that this is our third session in this particular seri series. I think it's the third one. Um, yes, it is. Uh, so marketing outside of the box, we do every, every week at the same time, same place. Um, this month, we're focused on uh, customer service being the number one form of marketing um, as far as connecting to your customers, that is. Um, so the first week we talked about getting to know your customers again. Last week we talked about building genuine customer connections and today we're focused on being authentic. So um, before I jump into our presentation, I did wanna share a few things with today's audience. Number one, and this goes for you all on Facebook as well. Number one, um, so last week we did a soft announcement of an accelerator program that we are launching. Um, it's called the Come Up Accelerator. Um, this particular accelerator is for um, black and brown founders. Uh, and it gives you the opportunity to get mentorship. Uh, you have access to subject matter experts and we'll choose five companies and each company can get up to an average of $50,000 in equity investment. So if you get our emails, which I'm, I'm hoping everyone on here receive our emails, the application to that is in the email and it's on our website um, and you'll find it on our social pages as well. Um, for those of you that are not black and brown founders that are wondering oh, what's out there for me, there are some options as well. Um, so we are doing the Come Up Accelerator in partnership with New Ventures, which is um, very rare in our region, the type of accelerator program that they offer. They're offering four different accelerators throughout the Southeast region. So if you visit New Ventures NC, I think it's .com, not .org, .com, um, you'll see that there are three other accelerator opportunities that you can also apply for. Those are specific to particular industries. So you may need to see if you fit into any of those industries, but definitely um, there are opportunities out there as well. Um, and then I also want to tell you about another accelerator program that another one of our partners, the Center for Creative Economy, um, that they've been hosting probably for over five years now. It's called Velocity, and it's specifically for creative entrepreneurs. So if you own a creative business and you are looking to grow your business, they are a wonderful, that's a wonderful program. And I used to, to work with them with that program, so I know how great it is. Um, so um, you can definitely check that out. Again, it's all in our newsletter. Everything I'm telling you, you can find in our newsletter, but I just wanted to point those things out. Um, and um, two more things, no, three more things, I'm sorry. No, the third thing is um, our other partners at the Thomas S. Keenan Institute for the Arts, they are offering three fellowships, two of those fellowships, which are local. Um, they are six month fellowships um, in particular spaces and fields and I think um, the stipend for that is $15,000 so if you are interested again go to our email there's a link that takes you to more information for you to apply I'm specifically pointing that one out because that deadline is next week they extended it till next week so please be sure to look into it if you are interested in um, getting the opportunity to do any of those fellowships I know one of the fellowships you will place you at Mixer to do some community work. And I, the other one is in Greensboro. And the third one is somewhere in New York if you're interested in relocating to New York. Well, it might be remote considering COVID. Um, and then I know this is a lot to take in. It's all in our email, but I wanna verbally say for those who may not have seen our email. 
Um, and then uh, we have a our, our entrepreneurial ecosystem. We host a program called Voice of the Entrepreneur. We used to do it, I think, twice or maybe three times a year pre-COVID. And in 2020, we actually didn't do it at all. Um, it used to be an in-person event, but we are launching it again this year. Um, and it is scheduled to happen during National Small Business Week. So this one is on May 4th. I think that's the Tuesday, May 4th from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Um, that That is also in our email. You'll see the fly with the link to register. Um, during that program, really it's the opposite. Instead of ecosystem partners like myself talking to you, we are really hearing back from entrepreneurs and small business in our businesses in our community. So it's your opportunity to tell all of us what we are either doing right, wrong, what we should do more of, do less of, et cetera. Um, and just things that you hope to see change, especially considering the impact of COVID on some of your businesses. So we really do um, hope that you attend. We will have panelists as business owners. Aixa, who's with us today, will be one of the panelists, um, but you'll still have an opportunity to provide that feedback as well. Um, and we will have some prizes to give away from our ecosystem partners. And you know, prizes range from maybe you'll get some free access to the, to the co-working space, Flywheel co-working space. Um, well, I know one of our partners, the Center for Private Business, they're giving away a free membership. So there's, there's a few opportunities for you to, to engage and hopefully you register and join us on May 4th. I hope I'm saying the right date. Um, and then last but not least, uh, next Monday, April 26th, I am horrible with dates. Hopefully I'm giving you all the right dates. So next Monday, I think, believe that's April 26th, we are hope, we're hosting our monthly program which is called For the Culture. And I specifically want to point this one out because you'll hear from two people in our community that are um, hosting programs or, or initiatives that is, is set to accelerate um, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship as a mindset and as a way, as a launch pad to, to build our ecosystem and build our economy. So one of those is Our Place, Our Space, and you'll hear from Kelly Easton, um, who's actually the Vice Chair of Hustle Winston-Salem. And then you'll also hear from Jasmine Stover and she runs Blackonomics. So if you are available Tuesday, Monday evening, goodness, Monday evening at 6 p.m., definitely go to our email and register and we hope that you can join us. So I know that was a mouthful. Any questions about that before I jump into the presentation? I wanted to share all of that with you. Any questions about anything that I just shared with anyone? And I give you, yeah. That was the last email we got, right? Yep, yep, today, the one you got today. Okay. Perfect. All of that is in there, but I just wanted okay. to point it out. Good, thanks. We're also doing a clothing donation drive, but you can read about that in there if you're interested in giving to that. All right, let me share my screen unless there are any other questions. Are y'all looking at my screen screen or my speaker notes screen? Screen, screen. Screen. Thank you. I appreciate the responses. Y'all know I feel like church all the time. I need the responses. All right. So here we go. So today, again, we're talking about being authentic as we think about um, customer service as a form of marketing. Um, <laughs> and, and it's crazy because being authentic is probably the most simplest thing you can do, right, as a person. But as a business, we sometimes struggle with um, doing that. So hopefully today, some of the tactics and things that I share with you, you'll find beneficial for you and your business as you think about being authentic um, with your customers and through your customer journey. So here's the thing. Companies, small businesses alike, tend to treat customer service and marketing as a separate business unit like you think customer service is one thing you think marketing is one thing right which we're trying to change that mindset with you throughout this series so hopefully by week three you're already on that on that path but um companies typically think this way it's partly due to the influence of what i believe to be a very outdated business framework and that's the sales funnel um the traditional sales funnel assumes that you that prospects follow a linear path to purchase beginning with marketing we think marketing is the first step, um, and that includes awareness, interest, desire, and action. That should say action. It says action or something, but it should say action. Um, awareness, interest, desire, action. And that's kind of what, and you know, I went to business school, so it's kind of what we've been taught. I'm sure that 
as you all started your businesses and you started going to some of our, our programming throughout the community, we, we said some of these same things to you as we talked about the sales funnel. Um, now, I'm not saying to you that the sales funnel should be completely removed from your mind. Don't don't leave this session saying Magley said we should ignore the sales, sales funnel process. Nope, nope, nope. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm also not not saying that to you. That's all I'm saying. I'm also not not telling you to forget about the sales funnel. But anyways, um, the, the thing about the sales funnel to me, there's a lot wrong with this particular business model. It's not 100% wrong, but there are some things wrong with it as you start to think about the process of customer service and the process of marketing. Um, so one of those things is it puts the burden of generating new business primarily on marketing. And the reality is, hopefully you know this by now coming to us every week, but the reality is marketing is, is, is here to bring awareness, engagement, inspiration, and to keep you top of mind for your customers. The goal of marketing, yes, hopefully that leads to sales, but you can't depend on marketing to be what brings your sales, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, I'm seeing some head nods, so okay. Assume uh, the second thing that the second reason I feel like this is an outdated way of trying to be authentic with your customers. This this process, this awareness, interest, desire, action process, it assumes that marketing is the only way that people find out about you. Yes, Magley, you just said, well, marketing is about awareness. Yes, it definitely is. And it's important. That's why we, we talk about it every week. Um, but it's not the only way that people are going to find about you, find out about your business. It's not the only way they're going to find about the service or the products that you offer. Um, what, what they find out through also is through the way customers who already use you, the service that you provide them. So that will either attract or impact potential customers, whatever they say or do with the experience they had with you and your business. And that's not technically marketing. That's just, it's just life, right? That's just their opinion being passed on. Um, so you have very little control of that unless you handle it through your customers, your customer experience. The other thing with this process is it pays little attention to what happens to customers after they become your customer. And that's, this is the key reason why I think this is an outdated way to think about sales and marketing. I, it, it just pays very little attention to what happens after the fact. And customer service has a lot to do with the ongoing, which you all remember from last week as we talked about building genuine customer connections. So I won't go through that. Um, the reality is progressive companies and businesses don't see things this way anymore. And even though they may not, I don't know if they have it in writing or not, but businesses that we consider progressive, you can see that they're not practicing this, this, this form of being authentic with their customers by thinking this is the process, awareness, interest, desire, attraction. They know that attracting new businesses, new business or new customers, it's the responsibility of their entire team. They understand that. It's not just on the marketing department. It's not on the marketing team. It's not on the marketing person within your company. Even if that means just you are the marketing person, it doesn't only fall on that. It, it, it takes the entirety of the business, the entirety of the company um, and most of that comes through the form of customer service. And you see here, um, Jeff Bezos said uh, a while ago, I think this was back in 2018 or something, in the old world, you devoted 30% of your time to building a great service and 70% of your time to shouting about it. In the new world, that that's completely different, right? And so now you're doing 70% of your time building a great service and 30% of your time shouting about it. So keep that in mind. It's coming from a billionaire. That's all I'm saying. Um, or a trillionaire now, right? A trillionaire, I think. All right. So as I'm sure or hope that you all are aware, like gone are the days. You just told me about, I just told you about outdated things. Gone are the days when consumers blindly accept content um, the way it's been traditionally ch shared. Instead, customers are now demanding more authentic, ways and they want things more personalized online experience online experiences to match that that your way of being authentic with them so acknowledging the shift in consumer content and consumer attitude is crucial if you want to get content marketing right 
okay? And getting content right, marketing right can make a huge impact on turning prospects into customers. But understand that your brand, that your brand, your brand trust has never even, has never been harder to earn. Never, ever, ever, ever has it been so hard for people to trust you and your brand, okay? So with that said, y'all know I like statistics. Over 90% of consumers believe that authenticity is important when deciding brands to support. And one of the simplest ways to be authentic, we talked about this during week one, I believe, is through user-generated content, um, which we, yeah, yeah, I think we covered this two weeks ago. So to be sure, um, if you haven't seen that session or if you don't remember, just go back and watch that session. It's on our Facebook page if you need a refresher. But over 85% of consumers find visual user-generating user content more influential than branded photos or videos. So there's nothing that you can put out that someone else that has had an experience with you is gonna beat. Well, 15%, you could probably beat them, but 85% of people believe that visual um, user-generating user content, user generated content is more influential, okay? Um, and as we talked about during that first week, user-generated content, it, is, it, it builds credibility and trust. And that's what we're talking about, you being authentic to build that trust to get these customers, okay? So that's key, that's key. And we'll come back to visual later in this presentation, but if you remember user-generated content, yes, you can use text and other things, but visual is more influential, okay? That's what I want you to get out of this slide. All right. Okay. So <laughs> some of you may remember uh, two years ago, was it Tony? Maybe two years ago, we did a presentation on the different generations um, and how you market to the di different generations. So if you remember that, um, you might recall that we shared that Gen Z is known for being empowered and active social media users. That's key with Gen Z, right? And whether your current focus is Gen Z or not, trust me, they will be, okay? Um, Gen Z, this generation is, they, they freely communicate throughout networks. They, they read and listen to reviews and they connect with brands through online, online platforms. We know that already. So everything that happens with Gen Z, I call it the Gen Z effect. Because given their activity and reach in the social space, they have become influential and they're not, maybe I'm biased, they're not the most important yet, I'm a millennial, they're not the most important yet, but they are a very important customer base and they will be the most important customer base um, soon. Um, so this put, as, as a business owner, as someone that's trying to start a business or someone that runs an organization, this push you to, to shift your content creation. Um, you have to start to cater to a more interactive demographic. While, while Gen Z, are, they're very much like millennials, they still interact with content, like articles and videos, of course. Um, that particular generation, they want more from brands specifically on social media. And you know, we talk about social media every week, I'll never stop telling you to use it until something better comes along. So, um, Changes in your interaction may changes in your interaction with Gen Z and on, as far as how you communicate in general and trying to be authentic in general. Um, this may mean relying more heavily on polls, on quizzes, or responding with cust with customization to comments and chat. So you know, a lot of times we would see with even our local businesses and our local organizations, someone will comment on your post and never ever do you react or respond or say anything to them that's not authentic to people and they'll, they'll stop engaging and interaction with you and that's the difference between someone deciding to come into your shop or call you for your services with you sitting there responding to them you or someone on your team really giving them that giving that giving them that attention and making them feel like this is an authentic uh, re, uh interaction so again the gen z effect um, they like user generated content, right? Just like we talked about two weeks ago, just like I talked about in the previous slide, they do like user generated content. 
And this is because they grew they this is a generation that grew up on Yelp and Amazon. Right? This means that the demographic wouldn't they they're not going to think about purchasing anything without conversation points and reviews guiding their decisions. And that's why those polls, quizzes and all of that matter because they are going to look at those things to make their decision, their purchasing decisions. So without hundreds of reference points, whether that's reviews, photos, videos, you may easy, easily be dismissed or overlooked by a competitor. And we're gonna talk about some of those today. We're gonna to talk about reviews and photos and videos, but you may be overlooked if you're not providing that. All of that is part of you being authentic with this audience and you'll see how as I go through this presentation. So point number one, um, get to the point. Again, back in 2019, I think it was when we did that, that presentation on generations, we told you about millennials and Gen Z and our attention span. I think ours as millennials was like 12 seconds at the time and Gen Z was like eight seconds. I'm sure it's less now, I'm positive it probably is less than now. Um, this means it's, it's even more important to get to the point with your marketing message. One way to do this is take advantage of visuals instead of plain text, like we just talked about. One thing that I wanna say when I say take advantage of, um, of, when I say get to the point is a lot of time in marketing, we tend to over explain. We, we tend to do too much. And when you start doing that, you sound very salesy and no longer seem authentic to your audience, okay? So whatever it is that you're trying to say, just say it. Just whatever it is, just put it there, speak it out, write it down, whatever, just say it, get to the point. Um, so speaking about you know using visuals to get to the point, it's more about, when I say visuals, it's more about the short form. So in an ever-changing internet age that we're in, short form is an essential skill, literally. To accomplish this, you might wanna think about some of the, the elements that you put out now, memes, emojis, GIFs or GIFs, I know there's an argument, so whichever one you use, GIFs or GIFs. Um, so, you know, those, those can be part of your short form of communicating and getting to the point with your audience, okay? You don't have to write a five paragraph email to, make, to say what you're trying to say. Um, additionally, when we think about getting to the point, um, new phrases and acronyms will help you get to it. Like this generation, and I'm guilty of it as well, give us an acronym any day. To get to, to tell me what you're talking about give me an acronym any day and tell us what it means one time and it will stick so as you think about connecting to your audience and being genuine with them if you can do that if you can create one do that um let's see here anything else here that i want to point out about getting to the point i mean you get it i won't focus too much on it but but just know you you don't want to spend too much time explaining you want to use short form as much as possible all right, so <laughs> this is so timely considering our lives um, over the last year or so, but being a part of something bigger than your brand, be a part of something bigger than your company. Over 90% of young people say that their decision to work at a company is greatly influenced by organization's impact on society. This is key to be to you being authentic. Um, and you know, just to prove that with, with younger people, um, they did a survey, I wanna say, 2017, 2018, maybe even 2019, um, that showed that about 20% of millennials and Gen Z were willing to take a pay reduction just to work with a company that shares their causes. So these values, these, these things, these consumer uh, causes that these uh, individuals are thinking about, it doesn't stop at the workplace. Um, you're talking about you're talking about a group of people, and I'm focusing on them because as, as we're as we're talking about you being authentic and as we're talking about you building your business those two groups are your core they're your core consumer customer base whether you like it or not even if right now your audience is those that are older than millennials millennials are going to their millennials are inching age 40 so they're going to enter into that group that you cater to right now and if millennials are your audience gen z is going to enter into that group so just kind of think about that so you're talking about a group of people that grew up in the wake of climate change debates and countless government scandals and i mean we've been alive to see some of the horrific acts of gun violence and um 
younger consumers have, um, you know, risen above it and spoken. You've seen it. We're, we're living it. So even in the marketing, even in the marketing space, the movement and the progress in this space, it can't be ignored. It can't be silenced. So by projecting this sense of contribution and caring in your brand and in your company, your customers are more susceptible to believe that you are, you are a genuine and authentic company, you're an authentic brand to them. Um, now, again, we're talking about being genuine, we're talking about being authentic. So your business should be real in this effort. Don't just, don't just be a part of something because you know it's going to bring you sales because if you're not honest about it, it will shine through for your, you and your company and that's probably worse for you, okay? Along the same lines about um, social responsibility, there's also uh, sustainability. I mean, we, we are living in a day and age similar to how I said about the previous slide where you're talking, you're talking about a group of people that have seen a lot happen to the environment. We, we've, we've seen a lot of debates on a government level, even when it comes to the environment. So today's consumers are more aware than ever, than ever before of the, of the effect their buying habits are having on the environment. People are taking, taking more care over the products they choose to buy and the brands they choose to associate with. Many brands have been making a move toward more sustainable practices to reduce their impact on the environment. Once upon a time, we used to hear a lot of time, we used to hear, at least I did, in the near future, brands will be held to their values or in the future this or in the future that. Well, the future is here. The future is here. Brands are expected to be ethical in all of their business practices and use their resources to be a force for good in the world. Those that don't will be left behind as customers choose brands that align with their own values. And I mean, I've done it myself. I've been loyal to brands forever and noticed that they never made the switch to using natural products and things that was better for the environment. And I just switched, didn't even think about it. And I used it for years. Um, so just think about that. Um, also service-based businesses often think that they, are, they, sh they don't have to be part of the environmental conversation because they're not providing a product where they, they have to think about that. Well, you are wrong, you are wrong, you are wrong. In your effort to be authentic with your customer, customer, remember if they care about it, you at least want to look into it. And again, data is telling us people care about the air they breathe. They care about the bodies of water that surrounds them. They care about the trees. So even your service-based business can decide to participate in an Earth Day cleanup because your customer is paying attention. By the way, National Earth Day is tomorrow if you want to use that in any of your marketing. But anyways, um, back to focus. Um, but, you know, they're paying attention to if, if what they're going to hire you for their, your services or not. When you say to them, hey, by, you know, by hiring me, 10% of whatever your, your payment is supporting this environmentally friendly cause. So indirectly, they are supporting that cause. That makes them feel better. That makes them connect to you. That, that makes them feel that you are an authentic company that cares about what's what's going on in the world and what's going on around you. Um, again, they, they just wanna know that you're making a positive difference in the world because that's, that's what's important now. So um, while brand responsibility definitely goes beyond marketing, we don't have enough time to, to, to talk about it in detail. Just remember marketing the things that a company is doing to make a positive difference in the world May, it, it, it'll, li it'll likely be more effective than you trying to advertise and market whatever it is that you actually do or actually sell. Letting them know the good that you're doing could likely get your customers to connect to you more, see that you're authentic and purchase your products and services. Like promoting that more than promoting what it is that you actually do sometimes could be more effective. Just a thought. Um, so along the same lines, real people, real scenarios real reactions real responses how real can authentic get than real right so the rise of social media influencers on instagram it, it's not an accident y'all it, it did not happen by accident over 60 percent of people prefer to see real people in their ads they prefer to see like someone that they can tell oh this isn't someone who's paid to be a model they prefer to see real people in ads um, 
worse. And even if you are paying that person to be a model, they need to see, they need to see like, you're my next door neighbor. You're my cousin. That's how, that's how relatable that person is. So as a result of that mindset, you know, that's how we saw, we see that people have become what's known as Insta famous. Insta famous accounts are gold mines for brands, gold mines for brands. We see it with fashion models, world travelers, what they now call gym rats. And these are people that are seemingly living normal lives and are becoming the face and platform platform of consumer, consumerism for different brands. So companies are leveraging these Instagram accounts um, for users that have large networks of followers, as well as because they know that these users are authentic. They are, their followers already know they're telling the truth because they've, they've consistently told the truth. So if they tell the truth about your brand, then, then something there is very authentic about it. So while larger brands are doing this, I want you to know that you can do the same in your local community. And even if you're thinking globally, you know, you can do the same. Use real people, use community members in your ads, get them to become your local brand influencers. Look at who has the, the following that you need, especially if it's in your local community. Um, and just like how brands occasionally use celebrity endorsements, you can do the same thing with your local ce celebrities. Think, think your county, your city council, your county commissioner, your, your mayor. Think about your CEOs. Think about artists in your community. Those could be your local celebrities. Think about the, the, the favorite bartender that everybody loves. That's your local celebrity. How can you leverage that for you and your, you and your brand, okay? Um, but again, only use those people if, they're, if it's genuine and transparent because you can overuse someone like the mayor. You can overuse an artist in the community and people no longer think it's genuine, right? So just make sure that it's, it's all, again, a genuine, authentic. All right, hold on, let me get some water. I always, commercial break, I always, uh, anytime I'm wearing pink, anything pink and I have pearls on, I always make it a point to have something with my sorority on it to make sure people know I am not an AKA and I'm a Delta. Um, so you can know that there's gonna be something red because I'm wearing the opposite of my sorority. So anyway, that was just a commercial break. For anyone that understands that, I just, it's very important to me that you don't think I'm an AKA. But anyways, <laughs> um, so earlier I mentioned uh, that visual user generated content has the most influence on some of your consumers, right? Let me stress that again, but also point out that the visual content in general will help your customers find you more authentic as a business because you're not just telling them, you are showing them. So you're not just telling this person that this ice cream is good, that you sell. You are showing them that this, you're showing them like, look at this ice cream, look how amazing it is, right? The rule of thumb here is show them, then tell them, okay? The concept of visual decision-making is a thing. Um, so you, you need to start believing in visual decision-making, you know, using the example of that, the ice cream in this, in this slide here, like you see someone having a delicious ice cream on a hot day, the next day you're really hot, you're sitting in the park, like you are, your mind is going to think about that ice cream you saw the day before and you are going to find it and purchase it. So visual decision-making is a thing and use it to your benefit. I mean, people prefer visual content to, content to plain text. I've probably said that three times already, but I'm gonna say it probably two more times before the end of today. People prefer visual content to plain text. This is evident by the growth of image-focused platforms, i.e. Instagram, Pinterest. And you know, just so you know, Google, Pinterest, and several other companies, they're investing in visual search technology. That's how much of a thing it is. They are spending in their in their R and D and their research and development. They are investing dollars in figuring out visual search technology because it's that much of a thing. Okay, so a few points of data as we think about visuals and in your content because it's a big thing as you try to make, as you try to show your customers that you're authentic. Because again, you're showing them. You're not just telling them. You're not just saying this to me and I believe you. You're showing me. So I don't even, you don't even have to say anything else. That's why the visual piece is so important. So a few pieces of data, 65% of users are visual learners. If we have any educators in here, they'll probably tell you that number is, is higher. 
The 65 of us are visual learners, okay? 80% of us prefer colored visuals um, because they, in, sorry, 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 wrong, wrong content. Colored visuals increase people's desire to read content by 80%. That's what the 80% is. Colored visuals increase people's desire to read content by 80%. So using colors in your visuals, okay? People are 85% more likely to buy your product after watching a video about it. Again, visual content. 93% of all communication is visual. 93% is all of all of all communication is visual. This is why visuals attract our attention and affect our attitude. Posts with images produce 180% more engagement. So a lot of times we see people like to just write words and a whole lot of words. That's cute. But just know posts with images produce 180% more engagement. In our brain processes visuals 60,000 times faster than text. 60,000 times faster than text, we process an image, a picture, a video, than we do words that we see. So I'm just sharing that with you. Use that for your company as you will, as you, as you, however you want. But know that visuals, again, allow your customer to believe that you are more authentic because you are showing them, not just telling them, okay? Ms. Wanda, did you have a question? I see you raise your hand. No? You're muted, so I don't know what you said. I'm good. I wasn't raising my hand. I was. Oh, okay. I'm okay. good. I'm sorry. All right. All right. So, again, visuals. And along the same line of visuals, okay, at Hustle, we say it all the time. If you've been with us long enough, you know I'm telling you no lie. Video is the most popular way for consumers to learn about new products. Video is, is, the, is the most popular way for them to learn about your product or your service. So I'll add to that, live video is incredibly popular with consumers and people spend three times longer watching live videos than they do watching pre-recorded videos. Now, I'm not forcing you to go do live. I'm just providing you content around. Live. I'm not a big fan of me doing lives. I don't do lives if I can help it. But I do think you should know the information. And if it works for you and your business, you should definitely do it because I'll repeat that. Um, consumers spend three times longer watching a live video than they do watching a pre-recorded video. So again, do with that information as you will. But let me tell you a little bit more about live videos. Um, when the live element is added to videos, this makes this makes video more engagement, engaging, excuse me, as your audience feels there's a part of they, they feel like they're a part of whatever it is that you're doing and they feel like they can influence your content in some way. So they 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 join your live or participate in your live rather than just passively watching a pre-recorded video. And that's one of the reasons that live is just so popular now. Live video is great for grabbing the attention of your social audience on Facebook or on Instagram. I think those are the two main platforms that do it. Oh, no, Instagram does it now, too. Um, not Instagram, excuse me, LinkedIn, excuse me, LinkedIn. So these types of videos are they're so attractive to viewers because they tap into the FOMO mentality. I suffer from FOMO, y'all, so I get it. FOMO is fear of missing out. So people who have FOMO, like myself, if we feel like we're missing out on something they're likely to join your live so when you're when you're not sure if a live video is going to contain um any small bit of information you're likely going to join it so you know beauty influencers gain from this a lot like if i think i'm going to learn a tip trick a tip or a trick about makeup which i know nothing about i'm likely going to join even if i join for five minutes only you know but it gets more engagement um so think about that as you um, want to share exciting news about your content, just want to connect to your customers, use it to your benefit. Live content. All right. Bottom line. The bottom line is it is worth your time and effort to get reviews. Reviews are authentic and authenticity sells. 
We're talking about being authentic today. It sells. Being real, being authentic, being genuine, that alone, in the beginning we said what? Simple, be authentic, simple. That alone sells. So how do you get great reviews? So, I mean, aside from asking, of course, like we talked about dur during last week, heartfelt customer service is your marketing trump card, literally. Customer service, tying it back to the topic of, of the series, like customer service is your marketing trump card. No matter how many times you market the benefits of your product or your service, nothing compares to the firsthand experience of a real person talking about it in their own words. And while influence of marketing matters, like we talked about a few slides ago, while that matters, um, reviews are still golden because they are in the moment of pur purchase. They are right there in the moment of purchase. Think Amazon, think Target, think anything that you, think of your local, your local stores, anything that you're purchasing, any, any, any company with an online presence has that same impact. Meaning think about anytime you're about to purchase something. I'll, again, I'll use the Amazon example. I don't, I don't get anything on Amazon without scrolling down and reading those reviews. Not a single thing. And if I'm on a site, whether it's a company that provides a service or a product, if they don't have reviews on their site, I go to Google and find reviews on them. If I can't find reviews on them on Google, that's first of all, that's never a good sign because that means you're not asking people to get, write you reviews. But if I can't find reviews on them on Google, I make my way to Yelp. I will find a review and I, and I, I am not an anomaly. I am not the only person like this. Studies show there are a million me's. There are a lot of people doing the same thing I am doing. So customer reviews are, are more, they're more power, they're a more powerful form of marketing than self-promotion. When it comes to buying decisions, decisions, your reputation matters. They are key in establishing your, your reputation as a business. They are key. Reviews are key in, in, in helping people determine is this business a good is this is this business a, a good business are the products good are the people good you know and re reviews are they are are as authentic as it gets because again this is this is coming directly from people um and i would say maybe seven times out of ten you don't even know the people leaving you a review so it's great to ask everybody you you do know and even people you don't know to leave a review, but a lot of times you don't even know the people leaving your review and that makes it more authentic. Another study actually showed that I think it was also another 85% of consumers trust online reviews just as much as personal recommendations. And I just gave you my life example of why that is true. I will read strangers reviews on you. And sometimes it gets very, very down to the nitty gritty with me. Like sometimes depending on what it is, what the service is that I'm looking for or the product that I'm purchasing, I will try to find a review from someone just like me. So that means I'm looking for a, a, a black woman in her thirties. I'm just like, ooh, that looks like her. What does she say? Where does she live? Ooh, she lives, she lives on the East Coast. She understands what I'm talking about. So I reviews are real, they're real. So. Don't hesitate to send that follow-up email and ask for that review. By focusing on creating, by focusing on creating a great customer experience, you improve your chances of generating positive customer reviews. So whether that's online or through word of mouth, you you want to make sure that that happens. Um, and I'm glad I mentioned those two things. I'll tell you about next week in just a second. But um, one way of thinking about customers review. Um, and we'll talk about this a little next week. I don't want to get into this today. Is the customer roadmap. You think about your, your customer product roadmap. And that will definitely get you there as far as reviews. So let's see. All right. Oh, great. Perfect. So, so I, I mentioned word of mouth. That's what we're talking about. I want you to just have a head start. The month of May, we're talking about word of mouth marketing all month. And in month in May, we're only doing three weeks. I know we still have next week focused for this month, but I want you to prepare your mind. In May, we're only doing three weeks because the last week is my birthday week and we're not doing it. Um, that, that, that Wednesday itself, May 26th, 
is my actual birthday. So that falls on a Wednesday, we won't be here. I'll be not teaching, okay? But next week, we're closing out this series talking about audi audience targeting, of course, same time, same place. Um, and uh, I'm really gonna try to tie in a few things that we didn't get through throughout this series and next week along with audience targeting. So I, I should be able to wrap all of that up in one, one session. Before we close out today, one thing that I did not talk about as we talked about being authentic, but I do want you to keep it in mind and I'm gonna go back to the first slide as your image to think about this because it's so simple. As we talk about being authentic, um, transparency. That's the, that's the one thing I did not put on slides, but I wanted to just tell you just directly, like one of the best things you can do for you and your customer in order for them to see you as an authentic company, authentic person that they should be able to purchase your, your, your products or use your services or whatever the case may be is you need to be transparent with your customers. Um, and that's, that's why the rise of um, TikTok is so, was, was amazing because companies started to take them behind the, take us behind the scenes of what they were doing. We weren't getting this cookie cutter version of companies and brands. We were getting the real deal. So be transparent with them when something's wrong, when something's right. All of that is part of being authentic, you know? Um, and, and, you know, I'll use real life example, like, you know, many of us, I can't speak for all of you, but many of us are still processing, you know, the verdict that actually came out yesterday, but at the same time, another life being taken by the hands of police, literally as the verdict was being read, right? And many of our, us are processing that dynamic, like brands speaking out today, saying that they were happy about one and not really that happy about the other, like they were being authentic. Their customers are connecting to them in that way. So be tra be transparent, they're being transparent, excuse me, be, be transparent in that way, connect to your customers in that way and be authentic and they'll likely support you even longer. So let me go back to my Q&A. Um, I think that's what I have for you all today. Just give me a second to get to it. Yep. Um, one thing I want to point out before I get to questions is I, I know a few of you have asked me, have stayed on afterwards after each session and asked me how to find certain things or how to contact us. So I put it on this slide specifically for you. Um, and I think Tony and, and Tasha typically puts it in the chat. But our email address, you can always email us here and we, I promise you, we'll get back to you. Hustlewsinfo at gmail.com. Um, any of the videos that I always reference that I said you can find it on our Facebook page, I may have failed in the past um, to mention the actual Facebook page and how to find us, but you can search Hustle Winston Salem just as it's typed right there, or you can search at HustleWS on Facebook. Either way, we'll take you to our page. So if you need to find those videos that I always reference, that's that's where you, you go. And then you can always go to our website, which is hustlews.org, to um, to the I think it's the, the the connect page on the connect page, and there's a contact us, and it also send us a message if you need to get to us. If you can never if you can't remember the email address for some reason, you can always go to our website hustlews.org. I um, mean our website also have a lot of the information that I mentioned to you today. Um, and our website, if you go under programs on our website, you can also register for many of those things that I mentioned today, um, Voice of the Entrepreneur, you can learn more about the Come Up Accelerator, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wanted to put those three resources on the page for you um, because I know I had a few questions um, last week and the week before uh, reminders about, hey, what's the email address again? Or what's your Facebook page? So aside from that, any questions for me about anything we've covered today or before today? And I can stop sharing my screen, I suppose. Yes, any questions for me from anyone? Y'all quiet. We're good? And Tony? As okay. always, Magalie, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. I'm glad that you found value in it. And Tony, do I have anything on Facebook that I need to address? Is that Shannon? I forgot to mention this um, on during the session last week, so I'm going to mention it today um, for those that may not have stayed afterwards to talk with us a little bit. 
So Shannon, who's with us today, she's one of the featured community members in um, a citywide exhibit. Um, and it's the Winston-Salem Portrait Project. So if you visit Winston Square Park, which is in downtown Winston-Salem, for those that are local to us, um, you will see Shannon, be, she's featured in that exhibit. The exhibit is a three-part exhibit. So there's a, there's a structure, a permanent structure there in the park, and then there's a video, I mean, a photo exhibit throughout. That photo exhibit will be gone by, by mid-August, but the other structure will be there permanently. And then there's a third part of the exhibit. It's, a, it's murals throughout the city. We have eight wards in Winston-Salem. So each ward have a mural in there. Shannon, I'm not, I don't know off the top of my head where yours is, but um, if you want to share it, you can. But I just wanted everyone to know, Shannon is out on these streets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Where is yours, Shannon? Um, I was told that mine is located, I think, in Jameson Park. Oh, you haven't gone to see it yet? Mm -mm, I just went to the one that was downtown. So, okay. yeah, you know, I learned down there that, it, you know, I was going to be elsewhere. So I was like, oh, my, I, you know, <laughs> I, was, I was feeling all that I was downtown. So, no, I haven't made it to Jameson Park yet, but I'm, I'm planning on making my way there. Well, it's definitely a reason to tell her congratulations to you all. So congrats again. Thanks. So I'm missing some things in the chat. Um, I'll get to them. Were any of those questions? Thank you for the birthday wishes. And I see someone talked about they went out of their way for a review. Um, yes, just yesterday was it? I believe in reviews. I believe in them. Um, so any other questions? If not, we can end. I can give you maybe seven more minutes of your day. Any questions, comments, concerns from anyone? I'm seeing head shakes. Brian, you're here. I thought you wasn't going to make it. I thought we you said you were going to be. Somewhere. I was able to make it. We uh, I probably I'm going to be hopping off of here right now and getting the dog okay. together to take him to the vet. So but I was able to get in a little bit of time. So oh, well, glad you're able to make it. All right. Well, hopefully I will see you all next week. Same time, same place. I hope to see you all on May 4th for Voice of the Entrepreneur with Aixa. And um, I hope to see some of you all on Monday as well for for the culture. I think that's everything that I said, but thank you all. Have a great rest of the day and week. Thank you, Magalie. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Let me turn the live off and thank you all to our Facebook audience too.